My first job after college, the day after college, I was standing, setting type by hand at the Steinauer Press in northern Vermont. Within a couple of months, I was in naval intelligence in Asia. I'm definitely an early bird. In fact, uh, I row, I scull, and I, four days a week I try to watch the sunrise over Long Island Sound uh, rowing. My, my favorite app is a tide table, which is so beautifully designed in terms of information design. Well, we think that probably the most effective way to communicate the value of design is to demonstrate it by doing valuable things. The question is, how can we get designers to prove the value of what they do in ways that affect people in their own lives? So there are a couple of demonstrations of that that we've pursued. One was Design for Democracy, which has been going on now for 10 years, where we, we work on election design and work with local jurisdictions on designing ballots and the ele election experience. Design for Good is sort of the next stage in this. Uh, Design for Good recognizes that younger, younger designers and this demographic of millennials that is moving into the design profession have this innate sense of wanting to do good, wanting to make a social contribution. Uh, and we believe that they've got a special talent in doing that as well. And so the question is how can AIGA play a role to encourage all designers to contribute time toward community projects and social projects? I mean, the value of it is not only what it means for them individually and the gratification they get out of it, but also it begins to transform their practices into ones where they are playing uh, a role in significant problems, social problems that affect many lives, and where they're playing a role that is more strategic uh, and often more operational than they're used to. But we think that that's where designers over time can make the greatest uh, contribution. We see that, that need clearly and feel that what is critical there is not to teach designers to be better designers, but to help designers have greater experience with the issues of context and society so that they can become a, a player in a much more complex arena, but one in which design and the creative mind is really needed. So what we seek to do is find opportunities like a program we run at Yale, School of Management, just for creative individuals to understand how problems look from the other side of the corporate table. Or uh, at Carnegie Mellon running a, pro, a graduate program, for, uh, an executive education program where they discover design thinking skills. Or try to get them involved in social projects, try to get them involved in areas that are global. Uh, we have, for instance, a, a role at the United Nations with the only design organization that uh, has consultor consultatory uh, NGO status, which means that any measure that goes to the General Assembly gets passed to us a week before in case there's a comment on behalf of, of the design profession. And what that does is it brings designers into a policy realm that they're not familiar with. So there are a whole different array of issues, but they are not about design. They're about society, they're about being a global citizen, they're about being a player in a much bigger arena. I think there's a tremendous need and demand for design that's going to emerge out of the economic recovery for, for a number of reasons. And, and it may well be around design in a whole different role and context than we've thought of traditionally. But uh, with, the, with the economic recovery, I think there, there's going to be an awareness that society itself has changed and needs a, uh, a product and a service that is simpler and more authentic because of the resource constraints that society has encountered. And I think that's going to demand design services. I think also there's this issue of a continuing expansion of information and the need for designers to make the complex clear and enhance understanding. In any economic recover, recovery, there are new startups. And certainly in this, in this current era of innovation around information services. And every startup needs a new designer. So I think that there's, there are all kinds of reasons why the design profession itself can keep growing. Uh, the global economy means that things are produced wherever they can be produced most cheaply, which means design is the only differentiator. So there are a lot of those uh, issues. The 
you have to learn to respect the point of view of other people rather than have contempt for it. It's really important for designers to understand that business people in their own minds do get it. You know, and, and by the same token, business people have to realize that designers do get it. Because both sides are responsible for suggesting that their whole mindset is very different. I think for uh, a young designer, I would urge them to watch and to listen carefully and try to develop the vernacular, the language that business is using in seeing problems. You may come up with a different solution, but you should be willing to see it in their eyes in order to articulate it.